this is the new 2025 Chevrolet Tahoe Z71 package with the Duramax diesel, and that's a big deal. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SV Talk. In this video, we'll talk to you about what the exterior looks like, interior driving impressions. Also, we did a kind of lifestyle trip. I had my boys with me. We'll tell you some of the adventures we went to, and I'm sure you some footage on that. And my overall thoughts, and well, when I wrap it up, the driving impressions of this vehicle. So, let's get back to the exterior of this Z71. So, some changes here. You can see the front fascia is different from prior model years. It's been refreshed, a bit different design. The front here has been cut in a little bit, so you have a better approach angle for these tires. You hit a rock here and not damage the bumper. I have red tow hooks. I have a skid plate down there. This is, again, the new Duramax diesel. It's LZ0. came out in 2023 for the Silverado. It is a mile per gallon diesel. It is not a towing diesel. Mile per gallon. So what's great with this is you really get good fuel economy, and you get a much more pleasurable driving experience than, say, the 5.3 liter V8 because you have more low-end torque at a offline speed. So this is probably comparable to the 6.2 liter V8 that they offer as well as far as performance. That one get, takes premium fuel to get the performance. This one takes diesel. Def usage isn't that bad on this. Oil changes aren't that expensive. So it's just a different type of diesel. They've been selling the heck out of these things. Once you understand it, you like it. But it takes a little bit to understand what the purpose of it is for. People just think it's going to be heavy duty diesel, I'm going to tow, all this kind of stuff. That is the wrong equation. Z71 there, we do have these big off-road tires there, right? That's for a Z71 package. You have uh, LT, Premier, High Country, and Z71 as options. Tahoe is blacked out there. We do have the boards, running boards there. Come around the back. I'll try not to trip. And we have this nice finish to it. I think they did a really good job finishing this off. Duramax there. Quad tip exhaust, that's part of a package. So this thing probably retails around 80,000. I don't have pricing yet for the 2025 model year. Um, but it's probably in that range. It starts at 61, and then you can add features, add options as you move up. The top glass opens, the bottom lift gate opens as well, like so, I think. If I can get it open. So you can see we have some luggage back here. We have a third row as well. Um, not a massive third row, but we have a third row. And then if you're thinking about this versus Suburban, I have a video on that as well. We basically have about a foot and a half more space in the Suburban. Versatile. It, the Suburban fits 4x8 sheet of plywood. This fits a 7 foot as far as the overall depth. All right, so before I interview the kids, talk about the interior, let me show you some of these adventures we went on. Okay, skip ahead if you like. This is the first time I brought my kids with me on a work trip, and I want to put it in the video. I said, heck with it, I'm going to put it in the video. We'll see how it goes. Um, it was pretty interesting. We started off zip lining as we flew into Dallas, started zip lining, and those harnesses are a little tight. Ugh. We did the first lifestyle adventure thing. We have the our harnesses and stuff. Uh, did step one. Didn't like it anymore. That guy wants to do a lot more. He's smiling, laughing. He made it. I made it. But he started talking about like 50 feet. No. I don't know. <laughs> the adventure continues. Yeah, that was a long way. Then we went to the state fair of Texas that night. Had corn dogs and had a little meal Chevrolet had provided. And uh, then we took a tour of the, the state fair. If you haven't been, it's massive. I had friends tell me they had 16,000 steps walking the state fair and we did it at night it was hot sticky lots of people and a lot of interesting attractions i guess is the way to say it i still haven't figured out this parade it was uh, quite the thing i killed the music because of copyright but it was a uh, yeah and then well we went in texas <laughs> we ski balled and then we shot some guns and then the next day we drove down to waco and we had lunch down there but we also stopped before lunch at the waco mammoth museum yeah, it turns out a couple teenagers back in the 70s kicked over a couple bones that turned out to be femur bones of mammoths. They found 22 in this site. They had the city give them like $2 million or something like that to build this building. Uh, uh, excuse me. The rancher gave them the property. They raised $2 million for the building. Then the national park took it over. And uh, that's where they found the bones, right down there. They figured that a whole herd of them died and just laid down right in there. And they were able to unearth them. And uh, my son shot all this footage, so... I want to make sure I include this in the video, my older son. He uh, he really wanted to shoot this. He's taking journalism classes, and so we've got to work on his zooming a little bit. <laughs> but they, 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 we think they were in a drought. They ran out of water. They got tired, and they, well, they fell over is kind of what they think. And then inside the building, it's all air-cooled, and uh, yeah, it is all preserved. There's a spot right there. A paleontologist works on the bones, and there's a mammoth on the wall. That's 14 foot tall, and then this gentleman's got a little, he's the, 
park ranger. He's got a little green thing showing us stuff. But they found a saber tooth tiger in there. They found a great tortoise shell in there. And that's an active site. Um, some of these beams they put in for this building actually hit bones when they were going down. They have so many bones in this area. And they found 60 other bones of mammoths nearby. 60 other mammoth, mammoth nearby. Big area of mammoth. Yeah, uh, Cody was very happy to <laughs> do that part of the tour. And then we went to the Dr. Pepper Museum before we headed down to Fredericksburg. Uh, I was pretty interested in Dr. Pepper Museum. Who knew it was invented in Waco? Uh, the drugstore guy kind of put together a combination, and there was videos and things we watched. The bottles were really interesting. That's why I'm going to make footage of those, those bottles. The boys were less impressed. Big Dr. Pepper drinker, but not impressed in the history of Dr. Pepper <laughs> at all. Uh, the red bottle there is a twist-off, which I didn't think they went back that far in time to do twist-offs, but they did. And there's all your different bottles. And then in the other building, they had this idea of what it looks like for distributing. They were distributing 7-Up at that time and uh, what it looked like inside the factory. So I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. Then next day in Fredericksburg, um, we went to a World War II Pacific Museum. Who knew in the middle of rancher country in Texas was this museum that had the B-25 from Doolittle? Because it turns out Admiral Nimitz was born in Fredericksburg. And he's the guy who fought in the Pacific War who commanded all the World War II troops. And this is really interesting. That tank blew a hole in it. And you can see the hole where they climbed out. And there was a di displays we looked at. A pretty interesting museum. Uh, well worth the money. It takes about two hours to do a tour of it. We took about 30 minutes. <laughs> so this is what I got. And then we had to relax at the end of our uh, long day and long trip. People tend to stress about filling up with diesel. It's not a big deal. Uh, new gas pumps like this shell we're at here have clean nozzles, clean pump. It doesn't stink. It's not smelling like the farmer's gas stations where it's all covered in their gloves, what's over in gloves and stuff like that. So it's not a bad experience. Um, it's just people tend to forget about it. And look, it's three dollars a gallon, so it's not that expensive either. Okay, I just filled up, but it shows shows twenty miles per gallon, three hundred twenty-five miles, that kind of stuff. But you have to go over here. You go home, vehicle status, trip information's here, and then you click on it again, and you reset trip one or trip two. So we're going to reset trip one and reset and there you go so now trip one's reset and we can see it there so we'll track that on our way down to waco okay let's start with cody son <laughs> he's he's busy he's got the headphones on you're watching the show you're gonna talk to us here so connect the headphones easy everything hooked up we do have the wi-fi everything connected in this already for the rear entertainment system and so <laughs> the seats go back. Okay. So the seats fold down, the kids can play around and stuff, but uh, pretty comfortable in seats. Pretty comfortable back there. Um, you forgot to take this tag off of your shirt. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that off for you. So, uh, yeah, been loving this back here. Uh, they've been easy to get in and out pretty easily as well, and loading up, and then we have a nice Bose front system there. So. This thing connects to an HDMI so you can get an Xbox. Yes, this does have an HDMI hookup on there. We do have heated outboard seats and a power plug down there as well, so you can hook up an Xbox and put it right there in the middle. And you can walk the driver and how fast they are going. Yes, he can. He, there is a. Oh! oh no, mood ring. I'll grab it. For our adventures, we bought a mood ring at the Mammoth Cave. So, the uh, it does have a system built in here that shows you how fast driver's going, how much fuel to empty, and you can track the trip. So you don't have to ask, are we there yet? No, you can tell. And why are you eating barbecue chips at like nine o'clock in the morning? I can. Okay. Son number two. Son number two has been in the front. He's been in the back. So. <laughs> You've been, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the interior? I mean, it's nice. There's a button that I can make dad hot with. <laughs> right. I've done that multiple times. I've also seen these in Apple CarPlay. In there. Yep, we've used Apple CarPlay. We've used the system over there. It's tilted for the driver, but he can still see, which, um, yeah, good and bad. Yep, and. Yep, and then we have the center console slides back by push of a button. Um, we what about the seats? Seat comfort, comfortable? Can make it go high eye. <laughs> right. So, uh, seat comfort pretty nice for you. I mean, yeah. You can make it your own comfort. Right. He's he's having fun and with there's that. There's not even massage. Oh, there's not there's massage in this one. So that that was our our downside. There's no massage. So, all right. Let me uh, let me get around the driver's side and I'll show you how that looks. 
last cup holders as well. Uh, we've had lots of drinks in here over the last couple days. Okay, come around the side, one front more time. Okay, so we'll get in here. I want, do want to point out our payload is going to be 1,497 pounds. We're going to tow about 8,000 pounds with us. Again, not a heavy duty diesel towing rig, but instead it's fuel economy. So I've been averaging about 21, but I've been idling quite a bit. I'd imagine on like a road trip or something like that, if you're driving straight, you probably get closer to 23, 24, 25, something in that range. Uh, he's playing with the vehicle status screen. Maintenance gauges, trip. Fuel, this is how you set your fuel economy here, idling time, all the kind of stuff in that screen. Home button here. Uh, somebody said they, on TikTok, they bought one of these. They found the screen not to be intuitive and user-friendly. And um, I guess I don't understand that. I found it to be really user-friendly. Uh, the cameras are nice. You can see those. I'll show you some nighttime footage in just a minute. And we can see those cameras and lights as well. But I can tell you the driving position. I can see over the hood nice and easily. I can see where I'm going. It drives a lot smaller than you think. Um, they did lower this dash quite a bit, which is a big change. They moved a lot of electrical down, airbags and things, and we were able to get this down so you have to see over the dash a little more. And they made the smaller dash here that's really bright and vibrant, but it, as you can tell, it's not as big. It doesn't stand up so tall. It's nice as this is a nice line here. So you can see over stuff or everything pretty easily. And um, you... Wait. Yes. Uh, yes. The center console is moving. That's what he showed. And he's got a secret Where's your spot. wallet? No. <laughs> He hid my wallet in there the other day. <laughs> Darn kid. So uh, yeah, we, driver control is here, radio stuff here. This is how you, you shift the park. So I'll see if I can't show it on the screen. It's kind of hard with the, uh, yeah. So let me see, I'll come over here. Let me, I guess I gotta raise the steering wheel up. So steering wheel, raise, tilts, telescopes, and then there's your shifter. You pull back with foot and brake for neutral, back and up for reverse, and back and down for drive, okay? We do have a trailer brake control over here. I also have the fantastic auto four-wheel drive for winter time If you have questionable conditions put an auto four-wheel drive. I have parking sensors which I turned off when we went to the car wash uh, Auto start stop lane departure hill descent control and another camera button. They have multiple camera buttons So that turns on the cameras over here as well So different ways to do it memory set buttons as well and the mirrors do fold in See trust me they fold in. So, all right, let's hit the road. And I'll tell you more about driving this new Chevy Tahoe. Let's check out this Tahoe, like early morning at night kind of situation. So the iPhone's making this brighter than it seems, but you can kind of see my lights right there. I'm gonna stop for just a second. And I want to flick the brights, whoops, whoops. There, so there's your brights. You can see them up there in the tree line, okay? And then there's your normal. And here's inside the cabin. Here's your screen here, here's this here. What's nice is the cameras are really big. Used to be really a lot of cameras, but really small screen. Now we have a bigger screen and you can see all the cameras. It's amazing how that works out. We'll do overhead, side profile, standard. Okay, so then we have lights there and lights there, okay. This is all lit up over here with all your instruments. I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna pop these lights on. So there's lights here and Lights there and lights in the back. So really well lit cabin and lights in the window well. Sorry, my fans there, but lights in the foot well, which is always nice to see, especially, you know, getting in and out in the dark. Where to you put your feet, you know, where to not put your feet with all the stuff I have down there with all the debris from uh, being outside. But uh, yeah, so then on the outside, we'll check this out here. Here's your lighting signature. So we have little amber lights. There's our lights there. Yeah, really nice look there. I like that a lot. And then we'll come around over here, we'll see what the back looks like. Oh, the Tahoe. Okay. Yeah, there's your nice rear. I think they did a really good job of these lights. Really stands out, looks good. Yeah, home run there. And I wonder if it's got a puddle lamp or anything. Shining down, so let me open that, see if anything shines down. Sometimes you get the stuff shining down here. Looks like I don't, looks like I just have lighting in here, but again, it's not dark, dark. It's just early dawn, but it definitely is pretty lit in this cabin. Okay, out on the road here with the Duramax diesel. This is probably my favorite powertrain GM has right now. Um, I get good fuel economy. I get lots of low end torque off lines, and it's really quick. 
and I have plenty of power for passing maneuvers. 50 to 75, put your foot into it, it go. It's small, it's linear power, so it doesn't like it spools, you gotta take off. This is really good power delivery on this. And I used, like I said, I used to own a 2023 Silverado 1500. I really enjoyed it. There are some criticisms of this powertrain. It is an oil burner, really. It does use oil at times. It's funny, uh, when I first discovered this, there was a technical service bulletin for consumers who went to dealership for the technicians to let them know this is a not a known issue. It is a part of owning this vehicle, this engine. And uh, people online were like, my truck doesn't use any oil and this doesn't do that. And I went and I talked to mechanics and I talked to different uh, uh, engineers at different brands and uh, they all came the same thing. They're like, yeah, you know, it uses oil. It, engines use oil through the PCV valve or through the rings as the rings wear down. And they really weren't thinking that was that big of a deal. So people had made a big deal about it, didn't make a big deal about it. Um, other changes this year, I think I may have talked about this earlier. I like the big steering wheel, it's nice. It's, it really gives you a firm, um, better better feeling, excuse me, a, a really firm big steering wheel makes it give you a better feeling of behind the wheel. Like you just, I feel like I'm in more control. I don't want a smaller steering wheel, I, I, especially the size of the vehicle. And it's a dumb thing, small little stupid thing, but I definitely do like additional size. I like the overall dash layout. I really like these seats. I've been critical of GM seats for several years now and these seats are really comfortable. And that says a lot. Pretty quiet in the cabin. Um, it's not, uh, I, I hear a little road noise here and there, but again, it's, it's kind of windy today, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. And uh, smooth. You would think with these off-road tires, I'd hear some tire whine, or I'd hear some, uh, feel some more vibrations. And I really don't. Now this model does have the air suspension built into it, which is nice for load leveling in the back, and over some of these bumps, it does mute them a little bit more than you would think. Um, as far as the overall feel of the road. Uh, I don't know that I would say it's that much better than others, but it is just something new in this model. I'm also using adaptive cruise control. And if you've taken other vehicles, you may notice there's a lag when the, if you, you know, get behind a vehicle, the vehicle in front of you slows down, and you match the speed when you come across, there's usually a bit, bit of a lag. And the Tahoe, starting back, I think in 2020, they redid the entire electrical architecture. So it's got new processors, new computers and things. And so what the problem was, the lag wasn't the engine performance, the lag was the processors identifying the vehicle had moved and then sending the signal to the engine to get back up to speed. So that's taken care of, there's no lag there anymore. Um, yeah, it's just, they've, they've done a lot of things right in this. I, I'm gonna try to find things nitpick, but I really don't have much, because I think they've done, like I said, a lot of things right. There's a reason why GM is the full-size SUV leader. This Tahoe, the Yukon, the Suburban, great family haulers. Uh, and again, having the Duramax and the Z71 package where you go maybe more off-roading or you do you know, maybe a, a small towing camper to a trailer or something, or you're just driving around like I am normally and you're getting pretty decent fuel economy out of a large body on frame SUV. My son told me, he's like, this is like a truck and an SUV combined. And I'm like, that's exactly right. Without the big fuel economy penalty that it used to have in years past. There you go, there's kind of my thoughts on this 2025 Chevy Tahoe after having it around for, uh, we drove it all around uh, Waco, Fredericksburg, we were in Dallas. Um, I found it easy to park. I found this steering radius pretty easy to use. The cameras were nice to see things around and uh, as far as identifying objects not drive over. And it's we've had a good time with it. So yeah. for more good times, check out videos over here. Website down below as well, pickup truck talk. Dot com. As always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.